So now you know how to use ladder logic to write very basic programs. But it's very rare, and I don't actually think it ever happens that you can control the entire production using just contacts and calls. We need to learn some more instructions. So I want to show you timers, flip-flops, edges, and counters. Let's start with timers. Very often, we need certain events to last for a specific amount of time. That's why in every PLC, we have different types of timers. And I'm going to show you the three that I'm using the most. I've created a new project and uh, I created it so that it can connect to Factory I.O. I've also created a new scene in Factory I.O. It is almost empty. There is only this panel here with three buttons and lights. Okay. What I did, I've added this, uh, these three buttons with lights. And when I go to drivers, I've created these inputs and outputs. And I did the same thing in our PLC tags. So these inputs and outputs here. If you don't know how to do this, please look at the previous video. It is uh, explained extensively there. All right. Uh, so now I'm going to show you how to use timers in the program. So here on the right, you have the panel that you can hide and extend. What I want to look at is instructions. There's plenty of instructions here. You can have a look what's here. There's a lot of different functions. I'm not using probably half of them, but, but it's good to know that they're there because sometimes you might want to have a look. And guys, use help. Okay, it's uh, it's here for you. Someone did it for you. I don't know everything as well. And help is a great tool. It can be very well helpful. <laughs> this is this is what it's for. Okay, so so you can just click here or try clicking F one, and the and you can you can get access to to help information. Anyway, I'm going to um, explain to you how they work. I will start with the one that I'm using, I think the most, it's on delay timer, T-O-N. Let's start with this one. I'm placing it in OB1, organization block one. I'm drag and dropping it here. And there is also another way to add it. I will show you with the next timer. And what it's doing, we have a window here and it is asking me to create a data block. Now, what does it mean? It's asking me to create a place in memory, to reserve a place in memory where information for this timer is going to be stored. I will do it. Let's give it a name because it's going to be instance data block. This instance of this function. I will try to explain it to you a bit later, but uh, what you should know that some functions require reserving some memory in the PLC and, and this memory will be called instance data block for certain functions. I'm creating this instant data block and you will see it will appear in the project tree. Let's go back to the block for a second. Let's discuss inputs and outputs. And then I will show you what's inside of the instance data block. Okay, so this is PT. All the inputs and outputs will be described here in this table. So it's saying it's the duration of the on delay. It means for this period of time, the timer will be waiting to set the output. Let's make it four seconds. And I'm typing T sharp for seconds. And the T sharp here is to say the compiler that I'm using the type time. In older S7 PLCs, we were using, for example, P sharp for pointer. I think they're still used in TIE portal, but it's very limited here. Uh, there they were used uh, really extensively. Same thing. Uh, hexadecimal numbers 
if you want to use a hexadecimal number, you will type 16 sharp and then the hexadecimal number. So it's going to be type time for seconds. Now the input. Let's add a contact here and this is going to be our input. I'm going to use one of the inputs. I'm going to use the TON button input from this button. On the output, I want the lamp to light up after four seconds. So I'm going to write TON lamp here. And I would like to observe also what's happening on this output. So I'm just going to put some memory flag here. Normally I'm not even observing this ET output unless there is some special purpose for it. But normally I don't even look there. I just want to do it to show you how it works. Let's use a, a memory. So let's let's go back to the to the instance DB that I promised to you. What's inside of here? So inside of here, the PLC is going to store the values. It's going to store ET, the, the delay time, ET, the elapsed time. If you if you have a look here in the help, it's current time value. So the time that's that's already passed, and also input and and output. It needs to have some memory. Let's save the project and let's make a download device. Hardware and software only changes. I've checked the connection already between uh, PLC and factory IO before, so I know it's all working. I'm just downloading the program and we'll see how the program is going to work with factory IO. Let's go back to the scene. And let's start the simulation. TON is a button that I programmed and the output. And after four seconds, I should get a reaction. See, the lamp came on after four seconds of holding the button. Um, so now I'm going to show you what's going on inside of the program while this is happening. So I'm observing what's, uh, what's happening in the code. And now look what's happening while I'm pressing the buttons here. I'm suggesting you to observe this ET output and, and what's happening when, when the ET reaches four seconds. I think the animation is not reacting very well and also we don't see every scan of the PLC here but what you can notice this ET uh, value rises starts to rise after the TON button is pressed and when it reaches 4 seconds the lamp the output Q is going on and it's lighting the lamp once again And this is how it works. If I activate the TON timer for less than four seconds, nothing is going to happen. See, the ET goes to zero. So this is how the TON timer works. Now let's go to the another type of timer. It's going to be TOF timer of delay. Another instance DB, another piece of memory for this timer. So TOF ITD. All right, let's also use four seconds because this is enough time to observe what we need to observe. And MD14, double words take four bytes. So uh, words, take, words take 16 bits, which is two bytes, and double words are double word, so 32 bits, which equals to four bytes. Also, contact I0.2, which is TOF button. So see, you can type uh, the, the address and it's going to replace it with, uh, with its symbol and vice versa. 
because the, the symbols and the addresses in the tag table are connected to each other. And here T O F Lem. Um, let's rename this tag. So I'm going to go to definition and T O F AT. I'm going to add the TP ET because we're going to need it in the future. And let's have a look how the TOF timer works. Of course, if you select it, press F1, it's going to give you give you the instructions for it as well. And you can you can look at the drawings here, and it's going to tell you how the TOF timer works as well. Don't be afraid to uh, to use help files. Let's get rid of this and download the code. And let's watch what is happening. So I'm pressing the button and now, so what happened here? After I pressed the button, and and I released the button, the signal was still activating this LAN. The output was still activating this LAN. So the TOF is, is the kind of timer that sustains the signal for a certain amount of time after the input signal is already gone. Once again, four seconds, still active, and gone. So um, as long as I'm pressing this button, the lamp will be activated all the time. But once I release it, after specified amount of time, the signal will disappear. So this is off delay timer. And the last type of timer I want to show you is TT. TT is generate calls instruction. Now, watch carefully. I'm pressing the button. And the signal is there for four seconds. Doesn't matter how many times I press the button, if I release it or not, the signal is there for seconds only and always four seconds. This is how the calls uh, generator works. So again, oh, it didn't catch it. I press it for seconds, got. Okay, so these are the three types of timers I'm using the most. At first, the, the concept might seem not that simple, but once you use them a few times, you will get very comfortable with them and you will know exactly which timer should be used in which situation. That's it for this video. Um, see you in the next video. And if you haven't done it yet, join our Facebook group. See ya.